Hi guys, welcome to the lab 2 tutorial which is basically a shortcut tutorial. You can go to Linux how to install to Aji for the shortcut tutorial which is a client server model. For this client server model, as an input case, you need a client and a server. So for that you need and uh, in the last video we did the data lab, how to use the data lab. So we have already know how to and, uh, build a network. So you can hear why I have already made a network which is of two nodes, node A and B and this is the NH file for that. So this NH file you can easily see uh, made up of two nodes and visualization you can see the two node network made up of node A and node B with a duplex link. So in this nodes between these two nodes we'll be trying to build up a client server uh, client server network and try to send messages and see what is what happens so in this tutorial you can easily see the client server model and when you browse down and read uh, you should read through the tutorial so you understand more and this is an example of a client and the server.c files uh, so this basic files uh, use a stream socket uh, which indirectly uses a tcp protocol which is a level protocol and you can receive acknowledgements of uh, from the for the same transmitted message by the client from the server and uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, convert this .c files into executable files that is .exe and upload .exe files into your server uh, into your directory so basically uh, for our directory which is this data lab directory we should be able to do so so we'll open a terminal such as putty so i've already opened a terminal so i'll just ssh uh, and yeah uh, don't forget to swap in always see whether you have swapped in the, into the nodes to physically allocate the resources for these two nodes a and b so i have already swapped in so make sure you are swapped in and uh, the now i will ssh into the node a so ssh node a dot experiment name which is left to cs in this case so you can see i am into node a and my files have already put the executable files in cd dot pro dot five forty two uh, and yeah, uh, if you have a GCC compiler inbuilt in your terminals where you are actually using the files, so you can uh, use the command GCC space the file name dot C file that you want to convert into EXE file. So space dash O and space the name of the exe file that you want after it gets converted and press enter so right now my node a doesn't have this facility so but i already created the uh, executable file so i'll just press uh, ls and you can see my executable files are already like uploaded to that directory server.exe and client.exe so we'll try to communicate with each other uh, with node b so this is the i will make this as such as node b dot to cs dot e542 and uh, i'm into node b and again uh, you need to go where the files are which are in proj e542 the project folder and if i ls you can again see the client and ea server ESC files these are the common memory shared memory between all the nodes so i have just uh, used this path so I will again clear so you can see easily what is happening. So what I do is in order to execute the exe file, uh, you need to change the permissions. But I have already changed the permissions. I will show you the command to change the permission which is ch mode space plus x and you write your space the file name of which permission you want to allow. So in this case it was server.c exe. I already allocated uh, like allowed the permission for the file to get executed so we'll directly start the execution of the server file so to execute a exe file you need to write dot slash uh, server dot exe and before doing that we'll just copy the host name so that this host name is needed for the client in order to connect to which host it should know so what we'll do is connect server dot exe space give a port number through which it will connect like a one two one three two four five whatever so my server is on and uh, on the other side i will again execute client dot exe space the copied host name that i copied and with the same port number you need to connect so that both can receive and transfer messages so yeah 
I will type a message. I have to say Shai Jada but uh, yeah and the basic program in the uh, tutorial that is the this server dot uh, c and client dot c in this uh, server can only accept one message and it terminates it on its own so in short what i'm saying is the server is not in infinite mode or continuously on mode so after receiving one message it will terminate but practically it should not terminate so you can see now so it received the message and it gave an acknowledgement as well. I got your message on the client side because it uses a TCP protocol which is a reliable acknowledgement protocol as well. And uh, you can see that the server got terminated after receiving one message which should not happen. Once the server is on it should remain on continuously until the power is turned on for the physical hardware computer of that server. So the step two is the modification code that is enhancement of the code you enhance and allow the server to continuously receive messages from multiple clients so that whenever clients send like messages again and again the server will be still on you need to not need to make the server on again and again so just browse through this is the client code uh, you you can just go through and understand all the code what the code is doing and then the enhancements to the server code so this is the main part like a uh, next part so this is a code that is enhanced you insert a while loop so that you can continuously sense and uh, detect or what you say listen to the incoming connections of the client and if any client is wants to connect to it it will connect easily and try, uh, read and send and write messages and you use the read uh, listen command to listen to the connections and read write commands for writing and reading the messages because it's a, a stream socket tcp uh, protocol which is reliable and you use acknowledgement as well so you need to click here and download the modified server file and again download that server file modify it uh, convert it into executable and upload the executable file into the directory so which i've already done so so when you and i will uh, show you now it will be like Error, uh, multi, uh, the server will be continuous on and you just need to log in again and again on the client side to send the message but server will be continuous to receive messages uh, so in order to do so what I will do is I will uh, you need to change the port number so that the connectivity doesn't have a problem like 13225 right now and instead of server I already uploaded the modified file which consists of this so I will execute that 13225 okay so I will write down here as well 13225 yeah so i'm typing some message uh so i just typed the message and he sent me the acknowledgement as well the server and you can see the server did not terminate this time it, it will continuously on in while one loop and it will not terminate until the physical hardware shuts down so but the client terminated after sending one message so you need to again set up the client to the same port name to the same host name and the port name so that it connects to the server so again suppose i type something so yeah you receive the acknowledgement as well but the server doesn't die out you can try it multiple times so this is the modification in the server code and uh, the another part is uh, if you go down the alternative types of the different types of sockets uh, this uh, the example that i showed you was the first one with the stream sockets with the server dying out after receiving first message or terminating so we have uh, modified the code using the while loop we included like continuous sensing of the server that is remains continuously on and takes the messages the, now the you have alternative types of sockets so this can be a udp socket uh, so a datagram socket which uses a UDP protocol so basically it's a datagram which so sends all the continue messages continuously and it receives the message continuously it's not like a TCP and uh, this is like a TCP is reliable and receives acknowledgement uh, datagram sockets is like unreliable as well and does not receive acknowledgements and uh, instead of using the read write function that you use for the TCP uh, you'd use uh, for the UDP the datagram sockets you use send to and receive from you can check the codes and uh, this uh, I have already opened the codes for you this is the server.c that you download the client.c here you can browse to the code uh, and this is the modified server in which you can see the while one loop that we just executed so that the server connection doesn't die out we saw the messages that server was continuously receiving and these are the UDP thing uh, the datagram.c files that you can also find out uh, so uh, here are the server and the client.c files so I have already uploaded that as well and I converted into exe file so I will just again show you the execution so here the server is still continuously on so you need to control G to break the connection right now and uh, I will try with the 
another port number six and change the file again to UDP because the UDP is uh, file container the server UDP is the UDP one so I will try already on and you can try with this as well so the port number is six and the client file is also now modified to the client UDP which I have already uploaded and converted to exe file so see I'm typing the message he's receiving it and this time it's a received datagram because it's a UDP uh, it's a datagram socket so which works on UDP protocol and here you transmit the whole message one time which you cannot see probably here you can just see the receiving and transmission of messages but actually what is transmitted is complete message but in the TCP you can you can transmit it at once or in parts and receive in different uh, small small parts so that is a TCP which is a reliable you get the confirmation whether it's successful or not and uh, again you can try sending different messages again and again and it doesn't matter you will receive datagram so this is the thing and uh, the next thing is a zombie process so the what happens is whenever so right now I tried it with one node and one uh, one client and one server so when the, there are multiple clients uh, multiple clients needs to uh, uh, like uh, connects with the server and sends the messages and breaks the connection after the job is done so sometimes what happens is the here you there is a parent child concept parent means the server the child is the clients the multiple clients so the child doesn't die out completely so the thing is it becomes a zombie but you cannot kill it it's already a killed kind of process but you you cannot kill it using a unix commands of like kill kill pure like that so uh, what you need to do is you need to uh, read this paragraph and you will understand that and they just simp uh, you just simply need to put this line in the code in the main file of the server and uh, change it and convert it into executable again so like just copy this I already created a server G oh I have not opened it just hold on this is the server G file uh -huh. yeah so okay this, uh, okay yeah sorry so this is a server.g file and you can see that I have added the signal here so yeah and this signal which is signal sig child sig ign like checks about the zombie processes and uh, deletes the, any zombie process and uh, removes the zombie entries from the server side as well so we, what we can do is we can try to see right now because it's just two nodes uh, I'll break the connection uh, yeah uh, and one more thing in order to check the zombie processes uh, you have a simple command such as uh, this yeah a ps aux grep g g in, in terms defines like you are searching for a zombie process so I will just try to do that and press enter you can see all the zombie processes since I already logged in this experiment like a long back and I used multiple clients as well in between so there is like some this much zombie processes so you need to uh, like remove that zombie process so what you do is again I have already a g file exe modified just in the port number like a 13426 this time and I have already uh, in like executed the exe file and I've opened the server with the port number 13426 so you just execute again the exe file and try to uh, see, see the list of the items and uh, you should try to remove the zombie process as well and uh, the next part the small thing I will show you which is not in digital still it would be good to show and also there is a unix files uh, server and client as well you can try it on your own and the last thing is uh, yeah I will show you a modification of the code where multiple clients uh, will show will make multiple clients like a B C D connected to A and try to uh, communicate between them so I will just uh, I just modify the code which has already only just two nodes so you can go to you you'll under detail lab tutorial so I have already the code running uh, all already so what I will do is I'll just uh, copy paste the code which I've already made for you so that it the time doesn't get wasted okay yeah yeah so 
I will just modify this code. You know the steps how to do this in the last tutorial. I explained and you just modify it and uh, hold on. Thanks for watching the tutorial till then. Uh, like hold on and I will just be show you how to transfer messages between multiple clients on the server. It's the same thing. You just open multiple clients of the same port number, connect with the same uh, same server, and try to send messages. So you can see I have currently swept in with my new five uh, like four nodes B C D I added C D two node as well so you can see the multiple client uh, communicating with one server so I have already set up the whole thing to show you so I will just in a moment show you the whole so you can open multiple terminals and uh, so what I have done is you can see I have copied the host name already that and I have already been in node A and uh, node B and node C and node D I have accessed into all nodes I am into all nodes and right now so I just need to be inside where the files are and I will show you the whole thing again so you just need to run the same things but here there are multiple clients right now so just try with 222 and anything would work so right now I am there so you again for the same thing just hold let me set up everything. Dot, dot, dot C, space. And space. Two, 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 two. Yeah. And I will set up this as well so you can see side by side everything. Yeah, I need to it. So I am in two entered the servers and my disk clients just left with the last client which is node D. So dot CFC. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So all is set. So now you can just see uh, what I will send. Yeah. So you can just transmit some messages now. So uh, you can see here. You can see all the screens, right? Yeah. So yeah. So I will be transmitting from right now node B something and the server is executed and server is still continuously on. I am transmitting something from C and the server is issuing from that and again the server is on. So again I am transmitting from node D and the server is still on and now you are receiving from node D something. Not, uh, and again if you want to transmit from the client you need to establish the client connection to the server using the host name and the port name, port number. So I am again transmitting. So you can, you can see easily. So thank you for watching the video.